So I'm very happy to welcome uh, Carlos Rosa um, to speak to us today. Um, we picked up on his work through the Triple ID Awards, um, the 2020 Awards. In fact, I, sh I guess, Carol, can you remind me that the next awards are about to, um, we're about to go out with a call for, for entries, I think, yes. quite, quite soon. Yeah. Uh, I think the judgment is in, uh, the assessment is in March next year. March, so, so leading the, up to March, yeah. The, the call will be out call pretty out soon. So if you've got some amazing information design, please please enter it for an award. It's a, it's a great uh, great thing to do. And uh, Martin Fosleitner, who runs it, produces a, a, a brilliant book uh, of, of all the entries, which has provided a, a fantastic resource for everybody to for ideas and, and just to find out who's out there in information design. Because a lot of us work in isolation. It's nice to know who's out there. But Carlos uh, won an award for, for this work um with uh, with maria diaz uh on moving pictograms and as soon as i saw this i thought yes of course why don't they move now they're digital um <laughs> surely that's sort of obvious but uh i don't know whether anyone else has thought of it but carlos carlos and maria have and uh, they're gonna he's gonna talk about it now um so carlos is uh, is a designer and design professor at uh, iade or do you do you have a way of saying that uh, in portuguese we say iade yeah, that works for me. Yeah, which is a uh, design school in, in Lisbon, Portugal. And perhaps he, he'll probably say a little bit more about, about himself. And he, he's going to talk about this work on moving pictograms. And then he's going to go on and talk about some of his other, other work, uh, other illustration work, which is uh, fantastic. So I'm going to hand over to you now, Carlos. Um, introduce yourself, share your screen and off you go. <laughs> OK, um, th thank you for the invitation. It's I'm very pleased to be with you here today. I, I prepared, I don't know, four or five slides just to talk about my, to, to talk about myself and to talk about my, my projects. Let me see if I can handle Zoom. <clears throat> I think it's, sorry, wrong slide. Now you can, I think you can see me on the screen in a pixelized image. <laughs> uh, uh, so a bit about me i'm a design professional i can't remember since when that's let's move on i'm also a design professor uh, almost for 20 25 years i started very young and uh, currently i'm the, the dean of the, the of yad so the, the it's a design school the biggest and the oldest design school in portugal we are a private design school <clears throat> inside of a, a larger group, a larger university, that is Universidade Europeia. Um, and we are very well recruited because we are, the, as I said, the oldest in, in the country. Um, and I, besides my design projects that I still can manage besides the academic, uh, um, <coughs> the academic stuff that I have to do uh, uh, every day that, that is leading us to go to school, I'm also have time to to write for the the for the one of the oldest newspapers in Portugal that is the Diário de Notícias, and I have a small chronicle uh, twice twice a month. That is the Illustrated Chronicles from Carlos Rosa, that I write and illustrate for the the <coughs> sorry for the the newspaper. And uh, <laughs> we we are talking about uh, in the, the before the starting the, this conversation. And Rob, Rob was asking me if I really did plant the tree, and I did <laughs> plant the tree. I have already wrote a book, and I have two sons, uh, a boy and the, and the girl. Um, they are very young, so they are in their schools now. Let, let's talk a bit about the the, um, the project that I I, I signed for the, the for the the awards in 2020. Um, <clears throat> Maria entered in my in my office and said something like, "Professor, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to do something with you in information design." And I said to her, "To to her, okay, let's try to see how moving pictograms work." And she said, "Just that, yes, let's do just that." So we we managed. Uh, uh, a study, so we didn't even design the pictogram, so we used one of the most well-known systems in the world, that is IGA, 
Um, and we put the pictograms, the static pictograms in front of, of a group of people. They, they said what they have to say. And then we put them moving and we, say, we made the same words, the same asking. Sorry, for the English, we said we made the same questions to the, 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 to the, the, the control group. And the, in fact, what we realize is that when you put movement in the pictograms, the level of decoding incre uh, increase. So I think we are just about in the time to start using this kind of, um, I would say, technology. And <clears throat> it's not an hard thing. Technology. We used Photoshop and two uh, frames, two three frames for pictogram, and we made a, a, an animated gifs. So, as we don't have too much time, I decided to put him, put them all in the screen. As a good information designer, does shouldn't do, but I think it's it's nice to to see all of them blinking. Um, <clears throat> Some pictograms, in fact, uh, increase almost from zero to 88, 90% of the, the, the levels of decoding, because some of them are quite similar, some of them are quite confused. And if we realize that we are in, a, in an airport, for, for, for instance, usually we are running, we don't have time, we have to look at the tickets, pick up the bags, and you don't want to, to, to lost the planes. So, we made a study. We have already published a, a, a paper with the study, and um, we decided to to apply it for the awards. And we won bronze in re design research and editors editors choice. It was quite amazing for us. <clears throat> so thank you to the, the to the organization to the jury. Uh -huh. I don't know if you we go go further and let the ask the, the questions to the end or I don't know Rob help me it's the first time I do this with you. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question, Carlos? I was asking if we go forward to the presentation and then we left the F, the, the, the the questions to the end. Um, well, has has anybody asked a question right now? Um... I would keep keep going. We haven't got any any questions okay. in that yet. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, a, a bit more about my work. I, I do design research, so I'm a design professor. <clears throat> uh, I brought you here an uh, an example of my, one of my studies about the. I, I choose the Olympics uh, because I, I wanted to manage design methods to formal coherence in pictogram design. So I started to study the, 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 the pictographic systems that appear in complex and universal facilities like Olympic games and airports. <clears throat> one, of the, the, um, one part of the study was with the Olympic games. So I, I chose uh, three, three different um, Olympics, <laughs> Barcelona, Munich, and uh, Beijing, and I started to see and compare them with all the Olympic pictograms and try to understand what kind of design methods we can manage to design a, a system like Hotlacher did in, in the 70s. That's the main, the main goal. In the end, I realized that we can uh, uh, retrieve four different design methods from this study that combines picto picto uh, pictographic uh, Olympics pictograms and um, airport pictograms. The, from the airports, I pick um, Colborn, uh, Amsterdam, Hippel, yes, and uh, the IGA system because it's, it's uh, used all over the place. So I realized that when we combine some kind of uh, elements like skeletons and um, some particular modules, in this case for Munich, a square and a circle. We can divide them, and divide them, and we can apply several uh, um, rotations and diffractations and dilatations, and you, you can uh, combine all of all the modules to 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 get all the pictograms. 
so this one one of the, the one of the project the projects that I did it is also published published um, in some journals and some design conferences. If you have some interest, I can send you the, the some more information. This this one was one of my first pictographic projects that I that I did. I lead a team. It uh, was for an uh, institute in Portugal <clears throat> that uh, take care of uh, the, the 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 countryside and the the, the forests in Portugal. Um, <clears throat> so they wanted to uh, to design a, a set of pictograms to use in particular uh, uh, moments when they were operating in the in the in the forests, and then the the. Um, the project grew so much that uh, the design team proposed to the institute to transform the the pictograms and the signs for the, the <clears throat> for the road signs uh, system. So we managed it. We, we get in contact with the, the 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 Portuguese government, and we we have some uh, pictograms that are. Uh, available to use in the, the, the Portuguese sign uh, system, road sign system, that uh, you, you, we, we can't see them all, all the time, but if you go deep in the forest in Portugal, <laughs> you can probably find one or two when the, 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 the firemen or when the, 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 the people that the, work in this kind of uh, facilities are operating the, the, you know, all, the, all the machinery. And <clears throat> I don't even... I think I can say that the, the the to translate the words. Let let me. I don't know if I can do this. Let me see. Scheming, no, sorry, not scheme. Uh, yeah, deforestation. Yeah, it's a kind of main word, but. Uh, uh, in fact, you can cut the branches and you can cut the floor, you can cut the trees. So it's a kind of uh, uh, mixed in concepts. So it was an uh, amazing project with 32 different pictograms. It was kind of a large, very, very large project. <clears throat> so research now, and professionally, I only brought one project. It's one of the, the best and the biggest project ever that I managed. It's for a Portuguese cultural center that is uh, Contemporary Center, uh, Cultural Center in Castelo Branco. It's um, <clears throat> one of the biggest uh, cities in Portugal. It's in the, the <clears throat> inside of the country. Uh, it's a kind of uh, um, <clears throat> uh, a place that usually the, the, the Portuguese people go there when they are on vacation. So it's not a, a big place. But in fact, these kind of cultural facilities are uh, um, bringing more people to the to to the city, so I I managed um, all the sign systems, so pictograms and wayfinding system, and uh, the brand. So the, the the brand mark was also designed by by me and my team, and we also made some um, different uh, funny appointments in the the in the. Um, in the space like the the the, the, the cafeteria uh, with some <clears throat> you know a typographic arrangement with the same type that we use for for the the, the pictographic system the the this cultural center is a key uh, field where you can manage with some the, with the ski so it's it's a funniest place uh, if you came to portugal Please go to Castel Branco. It's a very nice place to 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 enjoy the the the, the cultural of the, the culture of Portugal, especially the gastronomy of Portugal. <clears throat> Some extras. Uh, I when I was talking with with Rob in, in the other day, <clears throat> I show I show him that uh, suddenly I, I can't explain how and when uh, I kind of became an illustrator also. And um, in the in the last three four years, I mm, have managed lots of illustration projects, and some of them or most of them 
also have information design, but the, 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 the audience and the target are completely different. So they, they are not in the airport. Uh, they are in, in Portuguese school. So these this small books are delivered for an audience of around 130,000 uh, books in, in the country. So probably I get more audience when in the schools than if they were sold in the libraries. <clears throat> um, the first book was about COVID, so it it, it was from it, uh, to 2020, I suppose. Um, yes, September 2020. The second one, it's about the 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 how they sh they could spend the day in the farm. So trying to understand uh, how a farm uh, um, is managed. And all of the books have. Um, <clears throat> I create some kind of uh, uh, characters like the Incredible Boy, and um, <clears throat> and several uh, like uh, Inspector Cello, Cello Kitchens. It's a it's not here. I I, I think, uh, but I, I can show in the in some PDFs that I have. I can share it with you. So it, it, in fact, to say what I I think information design it could be. Um, it, it is determined by the audience, you know. We, I heard all my life that the information design should be simple, direct. Um, yes, it should be, have to be, especially if you are in a hospital context or if you are in airport context. Um, but you have several audiences and targets that um, allow you to manage the information design in a completely different way. So these kind of books um, show me that um, <clears throat> I, I can mix um, two main passions that I have, that is illustration, and uh, I, I'm going to say to keep it simple information. As we can see here, <clears throat> you, we, have, we have graphics, you have a, a, a storytelling here, about how to wash your hands. So it's a kind of, uh, um, I would say that in the last three, four years, I enlarged my my spectrum of uh, what is uh, information designer. That's what I prepared. That's it. I hope you enjoy it. Range there um, from uh, you know pictograms to to illustration. I'd quite like you to go. I've got some questions about the moving pictograms yeah would you would you mind sharing that screen again because i hadn't realized you were going to leap leap ahead quite so quickly <laughs> but, um i don't know whether anybody else has but looking at because you put them all up at once and yes uh, and and i just wondered whether you could say a little bit more about these um i was just looking at your your uh, the um the book of the award and what was interesting to me is that you, you kind of distinguish between a set of pictograms which were relatively easy to understand. So I think the, the one at the top right, the um, escalator. Yes. Um, it didn't produce any improvement because everybody understood it anyway. Yes. So, <laughs> there was no problem with that. Whereas the uh, something like the customs guy, a passport guy. Yeah. Uh, down towards the bottom left, you you improved that from was that thirty seven percent to seventy percent. Yes, one. Um, you know, which is pretty impressive. I mean, it'd be nice to be a hundred percent, but um, but yeah, um, and 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 other ones. So nobody understood. Where's the one with the bed? The bottom left. Uh, yes, here. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. When, when you put the H with hotel. Yes. That you, you got that the problem. from zero to seventy-seven yes. <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah, I think you could make more of those figures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I remember that at the time when we decided to do this, uh, Maria was quite upset because I, I'm a designer and I want to design pictograms. Of... Calm down. Yeah. Before we design the pictograms, let's uh, give to the. the, the design world uh, sorry about the ambition but let's give to the design world some kind of information that helps the designers 
to design better pictograms. Yeah. And in fact, we, we decided uh, not to design new pictograms because we realized that the study would have more impact if we, we use the system that is more used in the world, that is IGA. You, we can find uh, uh, IGA in several uh, uh, airports. Uh, they, we, we, no, still, I, we, we still use them today, so it's, they are good. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's that's exactly the point of what you're doing. Um, and so the one one that struck me as well was in the middle with the, the waiting room with the clock going round. Um, without the clock moving, 41% of people understood it correctly. And after it's moving and the sense of time passing, yeah, eighty percent of people got it. Yeah, the the in the end we, <clears throat> I still I I'm still waiting for her. I think she's attending the 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 the, the lecture because I want to to make more of this in the Maria PhD. Okay. We, we we have to get more information about this because, in fact, when when you put movement, um, it doesn't. Uh, means that you, when you put a layer of information that is moving, movement, uh, it seems that layer improves the, the readability and or decoding pictograms. And the, the, this kind of uh, assumption that more, uh, less information for um, more mess, a, a bigger or a better message, I have some doubts about it because when you put the right layer in the right place, in this case, this kind of movement, in fact, we prove that we can improve the readability of the, 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 yeah. um, the system. Ad Adam's got a question. Adam, could you unmute yourself and, and ask your question directly? Yeah, sure, thank you. Um, I was thinking about some of these and, and sort of thinking like, how are you using movement to layer meaning? Um, on, on the original version and sort of what kinds of movement, like how do you make those decisions about what kind of movement really adds to the meaning? Because I think one of the things you that's sort of playing in my mind is, well, movement at attracts attention on its own. Yes. And so one of the things that's happening here is because it's moving, we're paying more attention to it. Um, and then some of these, Rob, like I think you were saying, the, the Escalator sort of immediately shows an action that we sort of recognize, right? Like moving up the escalator, even though it didn't change necessarily the the comprehension. Yeah, that's still very recognizable. When I look at some of them, I think hmm, the toilet signs, right? Like the, these gendered toilet signs. This when I first thought, I thought, oh, are they dancing? And then I thought, oh, okay, maybe they're actually really desperate for the loo, and that's <laughs> what. They're doing. But I'm not. Quite, I'm still not quite sure. Um, they're moving. Like, how is that kind of movement? Um, increasing understanding or is it more about attention or like and also just in general how, how do you think about what kind of movement will will add the most meaning uh, i think you, you are giving us some clues to make a different study what movement is the best movement uh, in fact when we choose we choose the movements by common sense so we try to replicate what the human body does when is getting water or um when is <laughs> have to go to the bathroom or to, to, to the toilet you know or what kind of movement does the the the, the poli it's not a police officer but i'm going to say police officer because i don't know the correct word is manage the 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 the, the suitcase the, the luggage in the in the airport so he happens he sees so we try to replicate the the, the human movements um <clears throat> we choose the movements by common sense and we prove that the, 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 the decoding increase. So the question is, trying to answer your question, um, if we have, if, or if we have more time, probably, probably, we would make a different study before, trying to understand what is the best move, movement to each kind of action that we are going to, to we have to decide for it. So <clears throat> I, I, I was involved in, um, <clears throat> Wayfinding project around 20, 20, 20 years ago. Um, it was the, the first financed project for my my school for for Yav, uh, and we study uh, the wayfinding in Portuguese hospitals. And we realized that if we even if we couldn't increase the readability and the decoding, 
people still getting someone try to get someone to ask something because they are looking for comfort because you are in a hospital so if you delete hospitals from the equation and you put this in the level of complex facilities like olympics and airports usually you are in a kind of a rush you know so you have a connection flight so you have to decide quickly <clears throat> so what we think was if you we could mimetize the human body the the the, the movements of the body probably we are going to increase decoding. So that's, <laughs> that's sorry about the non-scientific uh, uh, answer, but we, we decided by common sense and, and design. Um, besides I'm a design researcher, I'm also a designer. So I, I know that design has a, a, a lot of common sense and that's, and that's good. We can assume that uh, something we cannot, it's not explainable. We just have to do. To, to you have to be, to be a Jedi, as a friend of mine said, be a Jedi. So uh, choose by your common sense, something like that. Thank um, you. I'm interested to know whether you thought. About, I mean, I know this was this is just one one test, and I don't know whether you thought about how it would work in in practice in an airport, for example. Yeah, yeah. You had yeah. A, a range of these things, and they were all dancing. How how would you actually focus on on one on one? Yeah, that that's and so the whether problem. they were sort of less jerky than this, you know. So no, I think probably uh, we would use both static and with movement. Uh, I don't know if in the, the the path they should be with movement in the place static or the the different way, way. but. Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. So uh, yeah. probably, Maria. I don't know if you are online. So yeah, Maria, are, are you on? Yeah, Maria, come on, come on <laughs> in, in this discussion. Hi. Hello. I, I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> this is your PhD, Maria. Is it? Uh, will be. Will be. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. <laughs> I probably. need to think a little bit how I can continue with my. Yeah. with this topic in my PhD. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's really interesting. But I, I, and I think the data you got was amazing. And I just like to see it taken further and say, well, to make this practical, yeah. how, would it, yeah. how would it work? And how I could imagine having an array of these things where some of them don't move because they don't have to, like the escalator. Yeah. The clock's going around in the waiting room. Or, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, so they're not too distracting but yeah, just we, informative yeah uh, what we know as a designer is, is if you put all of them in a big billboard with all the the the, the, the geographies that you can find in some in the, that facility nobody's going to read anything because it's kind of a christmas tree you know um, yeah, exactly. So in practice, we have to, to uh, realize what path, what place, when and how, yeah. basically. I, I but for a starting point, I, I think they, they are quite amazing. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm suspicious, suspicious but I, I think they, they really work. So I, I had thought, Carlos, when you went on to the next slide, that you were going to that, that those Olympic symbols were going to actually start running yeah. and swimming, but because <laughs> <laughs> the ones at the bottom left there, that, so you're superimposing from different yes. Olympics, aren't you? But it gives them yeah. wonderful movement, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I overlap them because I was trying to understand how Munich uh, influenced the the. Um, all the pictographic systems that came uh, after Munich. Yeah. So they used the same in Montreal four years later in between Montreal and Barcelona. Basically they have the same structure, the same skeleton, and they <clears throat> kind of made a plastic surgery or a facelift to the, the, to the pictograms. And then Barcelona was the, 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 the first one that put some kind of cultural heritage in the, 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 in the symbols. But when you overlap them, you see that the structure is the same that uh, Hotlight had used. 
in, in the in, in the seventies. So it's it's quite 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 interesting to see that how a designer and how a a project from a designer can influence two decades of graphic designers. It's it's amazing. <clears throat> Definitely. Anybody else want to come in on this discussion? Any other uh, questions or comments? I really like the Olympic pictograms, and I think that the story, the history of it has, has been recorded reasonably well. Um, specifically, like the use of uh, the spatulas that you can buy in a pharmacist as a as the basis that um, um, for, for the drawings. Basically, the, the spatula, wooden spatula, was used to to, to trace around. Yeah. Uh, originally. And a colleague of mine in uh, Vivo Bakker has, has studied this stuff in, in Ulm. Um, and, and they're still very, very good. The, the discussions between uh, Otto Leicher and the, the, his team were what is the most characteristic pose for every sport? Yeah. And if you go back to the slide before, what's the correct, most characteristic pose of the traveler when he's traveling through an, through an airport? And it's so recognizable for most of them that it's the same, same theoretical background, I think. It's the same, how do you start, if you stand next to a, a bin on the bottom right, um, that's exactly the, the way you stand next to a bin. And it is really characteristic for... Uh, for and, and based on that, the, Alex Tyers has done some work in Austin Adams, uh, no, sorry, um, um, the guy in Delft University has done some pic work on, on pic putting two, two pictograms together in a series. Mm -hmm. And so before and after, or a situation and the context. And instead of movement, having two pictograms together seems to work as well. So in my area, in medical area, uh, after you've taken the pill, you can get a headache. So the pill first, headache second. Yeah. And you can also have the other way around. If you put a person first and the pill second, this pure this pill actually cures headaches, and it's a sequence that is yeah. um, is fascinating, and you, you actually improve yeah. on that by animating Ot them. Ot Otonio Rad did that in the, the beginning of the century when he created the isotype. It, it, it was kind of a storytelling with pictograms, and it improved uh, the 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 readability, the, the 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 passing through the information because at the time a uh, few people could read, so the 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 way that he, him and Gert Harms uh, designed and make the stories around uh, the actions that we wanted to, 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 to put in some kind of situations, um, mostly in medical context. I, I saw some, some articles from, from that time uh, when I made my long PhD. <laughs> when I mean, when, when I made my PhD. Yeah, I don't think there are short PhDs. I don't think there are short short PhDs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm trying to, to 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 meet the people that made it in few years or whatever. Um, <laughs> and in fact, the, that improved the, the 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 decoding the 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 main messages, especially in medical context context. Yeah. Amazing, uh, 1920 something, 1930 something. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking at the guy with the suitcase and thinking somebody ought to tell him they've got wheels on now. It's a bit like, it's a bit like the, um, you know, the old fashioned railway engines you get on uh, station signs. I want to show you, turn your slide, uh, slide off Carlos. I want to show them something. So this is, um, I, sorry, this is, uh, hang on. Yeah. Trying to focus. Oh no, it's trying to focus on my face, isn't it? Hang on. This is from um, Schiphol Airport. Yeah. And uh, Paul, Paul Mike Mike Snow. Snow. made, made yeah. them actually into a clock. And, yeah. Um, so he very kindly signed it for me. So I'm very proud of this. And we, yeah. we bring this out for our summer school every year. It's the summer school clock. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was in him. I, I was in uh, in the studio with with him in Reich Boherma. But uh, mm -hmm. he didn't give me a clock, so I'm going to email him. <laughs> no, sorry. He I'm sold, going to email him. <laughs> I had to pay for He sold me the clock. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. No. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, it was on. Um, it, it was featured somewhere on some website, and I just signed up. And maybe his own website, and I, I, I bought mm -hmm. it, and anyway, he kindly signed it for me. At yeah, this point, he'd only it's two out of twenty-five, so it's limited edition. I assume yeah. it's worth a lot of money, but <laughs> yeah. I'm very fond of it. Yeah. So, did anybody? Um, there was an interesting conference a couple of weeks ago. The Symbol Group is a new a new organization that um, it's symbol s y m b o l symbolgroup.org, and it was a conference to commemorate Henry Dreyfus's. Um, uh, symbol source book it's 50th anniversary and they're going to affiliate to triple id so if you, if you went to their website if you're interested in pictograms there's um carol you were there did they but i think you're one of the organizers weren't you uh, you organize everything so you're bound to be it's a good guess it's a good bet that you did um did they video the whole thing is it going to is it available uh, i've seen the videos they're not yeah. on the screen yet but uh, yeah. everything is recorded yeah. But I think they're working on the website now to make everything available. Okay, yeah. And yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Martin uh, said to me, "Hey, you have to send some of uh, some of your work, your moving pictograms, and blah blah blah." I, said, I couldn't manage; it's too much. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I, I was I was in and out of it. I, I did join it, and um, it was an interesting session on gender neutral uh, pictograms. Why is there always rows of little men? Um, and uh, there's, there's it's interesting discussion that actually about whether whether the the little man, the, the isotope type man, is definitely yeah. a man or is it person? Um, or can we give it a bit more, a little bit more shape? <laughs> so it's got some hips, and it's, it gets a little bit vaguer then. What whether it's a, a gender or not, or, or yeah. So that's that's a whole discussion in itself. Yeah, it's it's just amazing this pictogram thing. It can, you know, we can we can talk about it forever, and and, and issues the issues keep changing. So yeah, you know, we would have had discussions about it thirty years ago, but they wouldn't have included the gender issue or the movement issue, yeah. for political reasons and technical reasons, I guess. But as soon as you start animating and putting things together. And it gets very interesting. And I think that there's the, the stupid thing is, of course, these, these pictograms are decades or nearly a century old, and it's still very well possible to improve on them from a user perspective. I think from a design perspective, we've reached the end. Uh, if you look at Adobe uh, icons, you've got, I think, 45,000 icons for uh, medical purposes only. Yeah, but if you, you go to find the one you want, can you? That's the problem. That's the problem. But the, the interpretation of it by people in particular contexts, airports, hospitals, wherever, um, that's where the, uh, the improvements still can be made. And I think animation, animating them and putting them in series and using color um, is definitely, can definitely improve um, the, these icons or symbols or uh, however you want to call them on, on, the, uh, on the screens. It is, it, I, mean, it, it, I thought they were pretty, uh, not, not worth looking at 10, 15 years ago, because they were all the same or similar. And now we get very interesting again because of the animations, because of the color and because of the screen use. Yeah. And that's, um, we don't have to start again with everything, but a lot of research needs to be done again uh, to investigate how this affects interpretation. A colleague of mine, Manda Rane, is working in Mumbai, and he's looking at the pictogram for pregnant women in a public transport. Uh, basically, the chairs that are available for pregnant women if they want to travel a public transport. And he tested pictograms in Mumbai's center, and 10 kilometers inland, and 20 kilometers inland. Same country, same area, and the interpretation completely changes according to how what the experience is of the um of the viewer mm. and if people are more have traveled more widely and if they've looked at different things in hospitals and so on um they understand but if they have not traveled and travel less and less and less or have not been out of the city at all um interpretation goes down immediately and um, so the iso standard for pictograms testing does not specify what kind of 
people actually should be involved in the testing. And that makes a fundamental difference in the inter uh, interpretation. So, so again, that needs see to be, so Maria has got plenty of research topics <laughs> to, to work on a PhD. <laughs> I'm hate, waiting for her. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because yeah. it, it, is, it is an absolutely fascinating area to, to work in. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, working, I'm working with um, another student now. We are trying to manage music and information design for the target around six, six, eight years old. So small, small children. Because <clears throat> I, 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 study, I, I am studying music now with my, my, my son and my father. Um, and I realize that for them would, would be much more easier to have a different symbol notation for the music. Um, I, we don't want to replace the music but we want to try to understand how uh, a different visual system could help uh, the children in this kind of age to try to improve their musical skills. Uh, it has been quite interesting. <laughs> Carlos, on, on that, I might put you in touch with, um, was it Anu who gave the presentation at the summer school with Carol? Yeah. So Anu's from, from India. She works in Vienna now. Um, with with uh, Veronica Egger, and she gave a at our summer school. She gave an amazing presentation about um, graphic ways to to show how Indian music works, so her Indian classical music, and uh, I I couldn't begin to explain it uh, to you now, but but it has different patterns. It has it has it has patterns which have a name, uh, and and it's all a play on these these you know you'd, we'd call it riffs, but. <laughs> A better word and she, yeah. she had the most amazing graphics trying to do that it'd be what i'll do is uh, uh, we recorded her talk and i'll send you the link to it yeah please yeah. see what you think yeah. <clears throat> it was a, it was a great sort of explanation across, across cultures of, of how something i i've heard but i had no idea what was going on in the music <laughs> until i saw her explain it graphically and it transformed yeah. my my experience of it Anybody else want to come in? Everybody's been very quiet this time. Usually people all pitch in with, uh, with their thoughts and their ideas. No. <laughs> I have another quick thought, which is, um, I was just thinking about looking at some of those pictograms they have, um, some elements that are symbolic, and then some that are more representational at, or sort of lifelike. And it might be interesting to study how movement applies to those different kinds of elements, if that makes sense. I think we can understand movement much more easily when we think about something that's representational or lifelike. But when we use, you know, an, an H surrounded by a circle, how do you introduce movement to that when it, you know, when it flashes, it's it's much harder somehow. So it might be yeah. an interesting area of study. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. <clears throat> I, I realized when I studied the Olympics, it was much more easier to represent the sports when you use an action, so it's representative, it's someone doing something. The man is playing the ball, but in Mexico, they used the objects for the sports, the football ball for football, the basket for basketball, the, the blah, 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 you know? And um, they, were, they were quite interesting when it's thought, thought about them as in illustrative representations. But for the, the, the decoding, for the, the, the taking decisions, it were much worse than when you took the action. So probably that's why uh, after Mexico, all this, the, 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 the pictographic systems are the actions of the sports. So, but what, what you said, it's, it's quite interesting. When you <clears throat> separate them by clusters, um, kind of um, semantical clusters, uh, you can decide or you can test, not decide, you can test and then decide uh, what kind of movement you should apply in which part of the pictogram. Yeah, <clears throat> another study. <Yeah. laughs> when you want to represent something that's kind of at rest, that's harder, right? Because yeah. you can't find it. So you, sleep, do, you can't move, yeah. <laughs> you can't move yeah. when we are resting, yeah. yeah. It prob probably that was the only one that we shouldn't put movement on them. <laughs> <laughs> I was very interested, Carlos, in, in the, the range of your work from um, these pictograms through to illustration. Yeah. And 
it, it, it occurred to me that I think the earliest pictograms, would it have been London 1948 or was it, did it go way back before then? They yeah, were, they were, they were illustrative. They were kind of, yeah. yeah, they were kind of heraldic. They were inside yeah. of a shield, yeah. Yeah, and people were shown were shown realistically. I'm thinking, yeah, well, yeah. maybe we could go back to that, you know, with your yeah, probably your range there, probably, yeah. probably. Okay. Hey, look, thank you very much, Carlos. Let's yeah, um, thank you. Let, let, let's uh, sort of wind wind down and, and say thanks very much, Carlos, for for a fantastic project. I, I, we we it made us think about pictograms differently. Uh, thanks for joining us, and everybody, please join us again. Uh, 1st of December for um, for our next one. But let's let's um, say thanks very much, however you do that on Zoom, to, to Carlos. So thanks, Carlos. I think it's jazz hands, <laughs> isn't you. it? If you, if we're not <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so on. much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.